Hey guys, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here. And in this video, we are spraying some DTM epoxy primer on my 1932 Ford sedan body. So for those who are new to this channel, this is my 1932 Ford sedan project. Uh, as we film this video, it has been almost one year since the day I drove this car home from Carl Fisher's place at Make It Custom. Um, this is a old build. It was built in the 60s and it was, it was pretty crude. It was really, really crude. So although it was a you know, running and driving survivor hot rod, there was no way that it would ever pass safety and be able to, you know, safely be on the road today. So the first thing I did when I got it home was we blew it right apart to the bare chassis and we've been doing a full rebuild ever since. We are now at the point where it's time to spray the body. So this chop was done a long time ago. It's, you know, not the best chop, but it's not the worst chop. It's not bad enough that I'm worried about it. We're just going to leave it as is and work with it. Uh, some of the metal work we did in the last video, we replaced this cowl vent piece that was cut out at one point and patched not the greatest. It still needs some more work. We got some issues with the this cowl down here is pretty rough. It needs lower door skins on both sides. And it's got just a bunch of dings and dents and stuff in it. So for the beginning of this video, I'm going to work out some of the, the bigger dents, but I'm not getting super carried away with it. Uh, the goal with this car at this point is not to do a full restoration. I just want to spray some epoxy on the body, get the body back on the chassis, and then continue getting the car roadworthy. Once the car is roadworthy and I'm driving it around, having fun with it, then we can go back and, you know, we'll spend one weekend, we'll pull the door off, we'll put a door scan on it, re-epoxy the door, put it back on. We'll just pick away one panel at a time. When all the panels are done and all the body work is done, then we'll focus on paint. But for now, we just want to seal it up so that we can continue building the car and more importantly, get it on the road. I want to get it on the road and start driving it. I don't want a, a full-time project. I just want something that I can like tinker away with when it's fun and enjoy driving the car when I'm not in the mood to tinker away on it. So on that note, let's get into it. So this is kind of what I'm talking about with the bigger dance. I don't know if how well this shows up on the camera. Maybe if I go on the side here, I don't know. But anyways, we got a big dent right here. And if I take my hand on the inside and push on it, we can smack it out, but we still have a high point here, and if I touch this, it just pops right back in. We've got an oil can here. So we're gonna work this out. We've got a similar thing going on right back here. We've got a, I don't know if somebody backed into something at some point or drove in, got rear-ended, I don't know, but we're gonna work that out. And uh, this quarter panel here had a really big crease right there. And same thing, it had the oil can effect that the other side had. So I've already worked that out and we've got the oil can out of it and it is relatively smooth now. I used a very scientific method of doing that. I just smacked it with this mallet. I actually mostly used this end and came in from the inside and just kind of worked it all the way out until, until I was happy with it. It you know, only took a couple minutes so I'm gonna probably continue using this really high-tech method on the back here, and we'll attempt it on there. I don't know, we might have to get a little more creative with that one. That is a pretty big kerchoink right there, but we'll pick away at it, see what we can come up with.
Well, that worked out pretty good. It turns out, you know, this wasn't so much a dent there and a dent there as this was a dent going this way, like from the inside out. And once we, you know, started hammering that in, these guys kind of came out on their own. And most importantly, we got rid of the oil can. It is nice and solid. So I use a piece of welding wire. I don't think I can do it with one hand and hold the camera at the same time, but I, I kind of use this as like a profile gauge. And when you lay it on there and hold it, you know, flat to the body, you can see your high spots and your low spots pretty easy that way. So that's kind of what I used as a guide to get this out. And we've got it, you know, 90%. It's not 100%, but I'm not after 100%. I'm fine with 90%. And then we can, you know, do the last 10% with some uh, little bit of body filler and some high build primer. Here's a good example on the roof right here where we can, you know, see the low spots with the, the piece of TIG wire. So if we hold it across, you can see this big gap. We've got daylight from, you know, about here to about here, and most of it is in here. So we can come on the backside now with the hammer and just kind of keep working that up until we get a nice profile that follows the the welding wire weird amongst all that hammer and i was doing on the other side the window cracked on this side must have been shaking back and forth like that that's a bummer add it to the list of things to fix so i think it cracked because there's no like window track on this side the glass is just sitting right on the arm here on the little wheel so probably just put too much pressure on it Again, this is why when I got this car a year ago, we blew it completely apart. It's just because there was so much stuff on it that wasn't done properly. I just took that piece of glass right out. I think we're going to spend the rest of our time just fixing these little dents on the roof. We got one there. We've got a high spot here and a low spot here. We've got a little dent here. It's kind of annoying. You can't actually get on the back side of that. so. Might have to get in there with a little bar and bump it up. And I think that is the majority of it. There's a couple tiny little dings here and there. I'm not super concerned about that, but you know, we'll get the big ones. So I put a little bar across here and that allows me to get this pry bar in there and it's working really nice for bumping this little dent up. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, again, we're not 100% on this. We're probably a good 90%, but I'm okay with 90%. I think I'm gonna move the car outside now so we got a little bit more room to work and I might bring the welder over and weld up. There's a couple little cracks here. And once those are welded up, we'll grind them down and then probably start getting this thing ready to spray. All right, those couple little cracks are taken care of. This area right here where this hole was, I just used a piece of brass and held it in behind there to weld that up because the weld doesn't actually stick to 
the brass. I'm gonna give it a quick little buzz with the DA sander just to get some of uh, this flash rust off. If you ever wonder what it's like to have a shop two blocks away from the ocean, that was done like two weeks ago and there's always seagull feathers. Seagull feathers everywhere. There's no end to them. All right, it sanded as much as I am going to sand it. Mask the one piece of glass that's still left in it. So I think it's time to spray some epoxy. Okay, primer time. We are going to spray this body with some DTM, which means direct to metal. Epoxy primer. The direct to metal means you spray it directly to the metal. You don't need an etching primer or anything like that. This just adheres right to it. The reason we're going with epoxy is epoxy is a really, really good sealer. And it's kind of designed for spraying on bare metal. And then afterwards, when you, you can come back and do your body work right over top of the epoxy, you don't have to strip it again. So that's why we're using this. Uh, originally in the last video I was saying I was just probably going to rattle can it and I chose not to rattle can it because spray paint, you know, spray paint works fine if you're just going to have a spray painted car, nothing wrong with it. Maybe every spring, psh, 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 touch it up again, you're good to go. But if you want to actually have like proper automotive paint in the future, spray paint causes huge problems because it's... You have to get the spray paint completely off. You got to strip it right off and it's really, really hard to remove. It gets really, really gummy when you try to sand it. I'm sure you guys have all tried the, you know, block sand, rattle can primer before. It never, ever works. It just makes a huge mess. So to avoid all that, we're just going with the direct metal epoxy primer. And once this is on there, it's, it's good to go. We can, you know, I was saying earlier, I want to take you know, a door off, do a door skin, we can take the door off, replace the bottom half of the door skin and just sand the epoxy on the top, psh, 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 respray the whole thing, boom, put it back on, we're done. The reason I have gone with Summit brand is nobody in town can get me black epoxy. I have been trying to get black epoxy for a couple months now and nobody has any. All we can get is charcoal and I don't want charcoal. I want black, so we're gonna we're gonna use the Summit stuff. Never used it, don't know anything about it. I read the reviews, most of them were really good. There was a few that were like, ah, this is the worst primer ever. But you know, everything that you read the reviews on, there's always that one person that you know does not have good luck with it. The other thing I like about this is it was cheap. This cost me for a gallon of primer and a gallon of catalyst, which is the hardener. This was $167 shipped to my door, $167 Canadian. And yeah, it'll mix one to one. Give me two sprayable gallons, which is enough to do probably three cars, but you know, that's the smallest amounts we could get. So that's what we've got. And in reality, you know, by the time we do the body, we've got four fenders, two running boards, a couple little other random tin pieces. I do have a hood for this car. We got the grill shell, so you know, we'll be using a lot of this. Also, since the last video, you know, we've still got Mike's mixing sticks, but I have finally remembered to get mix cups. So this is gonna make it super easy to mix because we've got our you know one-to-one -one ratio right on the side here. All right, I guess uh, nothing left to do except mix. Let's get our gloves on. These are seven mil gloves, super thick, so that the solvents and stuff don't uh, disintegrate the gloves. And then we've got El Gordo's favorite kitchen screwdriver, best screwdriver in the shop. Done a lot of things with the screwdriver, including fix my kitchen cabinets. There we have it, black. So I got tons of feedback from when we painted the firewall and we had that huge paint mess with guys that have given me their tips on how to pour using masking tape. 
which masking tape and gloves do not work good. So we're gonna attempt it. I think uh, we just gotta like make a little V. I wonder if I should be doing this on the inside of the can. I don't know. I think I'm doing this right. I don't think I'm doing this right though. Might do a couple on the inside as well. Nope, that was a disaster. Okay, well, I don't know, we'll call that good enough. Okay, where is our... Okay, let's try our pour. Oh man, that does work. A little more. Okay. The masking tape thing, it works. Works well, that's amazing. So this, like I mentioned, is a one-to-one -one ratio. So we've got that in there, and now we gotta put the equal part of catalyst. And all the catalyst does is that's what makes it hard. This is what spray paint does not have, which is why it, gets super gummy when you go to sand it. Okay, this one is pouring not nice. There we go. All right, let's mix this up. Hopefully this catalyst kind of thins it out a bit too. It's pretty thick. Oh yeah, it's thinning it out. Mix that up really good and then I'll meet you guys outside. Okay, so just like in all the other videos, we're gonna start off with just giving it a really light coat. And then uh, once that light coat kind of tacks up a little bit, then we can go a little bit heavier. I think I'm going to start with uh, the door jams. So far it's spraying really nice. I'm quite impressed. All right, time lapse time. Well, so far I'm pretty impressed with this. That was, we just mixed up one quart and have like three quarters of the car done in one quart. So it, it sprays really nice, it lays out nice, it covers really well. I'm gonna mix up some more, I just ran out and hit it again. Well, that turned out pretty good. I gave it uh, three coats overall. It's still just kind of drying right now. So tomorrow, if 
I'm ambitious, we'll put it back on the chassis and maybe start bolting it down. But in the meantime, Raz and I are going to go watch Pee Wee Herman. All right, it's the next day. And Bird has not pooped on this thing yet. So that's a good thing. Now that it is all one uniform color, it looks better, but it also looks worse. <laughs> I might be doing body work on it sooner than I expected because this just, it really bothers me. So I don't know if I want to go out in public like that yet, but we're not going to worry about that right now because before I do any of that, I want to get it on the chassis. And the main reason I want to get it on the chassis before I start doing any body work is so that I can get it bolted down and get the doors lined up. That's kind of one of the first things you want to do. So before it can go on the chassis, there's a couple things we still need to do. I just went and got some of this weather strip seal. I just got this from the local hardware store and it is, let's see if I can get it out here. There we go. It is just like a little rubber, little rubber gasket. And we're gonna put this on the firewall right in there. They do make the actual like 1932 Ford firewall gasket, but I keep forgetting to order it. And if I order it today, it won't be here until probably late next week sometime. And I don't wanna wait around. So we're gonna use that stuff. It'll work fine. Um, another thing that we got to do the other day, we kind of had a slow day at work. So for the last hour of the day, Jim put down this little like body webbing stuff. It goes from the firewall all the way to the back. Uh, where is, I thought I had a sample here that I could show you what it looks like. It just comes in a big roll. Get it from most early Ford supply places. Here's the old stuff that was on the chassis when we took the car apart. I can't find the sample, but it doesn't matter. It's on there. It's adhesive on one side so that you just like stick it down, but we still have to put all our holes in it or at least the body mount holes. So that's going to be the next thing we do. I think make the holes, put the firewall gasket on and then, uh, Got to figure out how to pick the body up without scratching it so we can plunk it on here. So it says on this box right here by my thumb that this is 17 feet long. But I don't think it is because doing the firewall, we've only got that much left over. So the important part is it's long enough. It's got two-way tape on one side. I've already went ahead and wiped the paint to make sure with a, just a little bit of wax and grease remover. It's pretty clean surface already though. So it was mostly just to get the dust off. I think we'll start in the center here. Peel that away. Peel that away and start laying it in there. It fits like perfect in here. Yeah, very nice. Come down on the side. Oh man, and it's actually sticking too. That's good. I mean, it only really needs to stick long enough to put the body on because then it's just going to be sandwiched in there. This is like the perfect width. And it was cheap, it was like 11 bucks. Chomp it off at the bottom. Cool, and we got this much left over for nothing. I could put this in my box and save it. 
But in six years from now, when I'll need this, I won't remember it's there. Yeah, that worked out pretty good, didn't it? All right, here's that little sample piece I was looking for. And the reason I'm looking for it now is I want to do an experiment. So I got to cut through the frame where all the body bolts go through. And I know that a step bit works really good for drilling holes through carpet, but I don't know if it will work through here. So I'm gonna do a test piece. I'm gonna take some of this and stick it down on this piece of scrap metal that's already got a hole in it and then see what happens. See if it you know, drills through nicely or if it just absolutely destroys it and frays it and rips it and makes a huge giant mess. And if it does, then we won't use the step bit to make those holes. Okay, we're gonna stick this down on here. Find our hole right about there. Nope. 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 Okay, plan B. So plan B, I'm doing just like I would do if I was doing upholstery work. I just took a grease pencil and marked where the holes are. And now I'm just taking my scissors and stabbing through in a kind of like an X formation. And with the, at least with the white grease pencil, once the body like goes on, you know, we can see where our holes are supposed to be. And then it might take, you know, a little bit of screwing around to get the bolt to actually start to go through. But I think with a little bit of patience, it'll be okay. Gas tank is all in with the correct spring bolt and the little cotter pin. All right, I'm gonna keep doing that and then figure out how to lift the body up. So like 20 years ago, I took a crane and rigging course and this is not the way they teach you to lift stuff. <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyways. So we're bolted through this cross brace right here, which is kind of the only point I'm worried about because it got notched out at one point in its life and it's a little, you know, it's not the strongest, but I'm hoping because we're picking up near the ends and not in the middle, it'll be okay. So that goes up and over the fork. And then we've got another one going down to, there's these little, body braces on each side. We're going into there and then at the very back here, we are threaded into the cage nuts, which I realized as I was threading them in are spot welded on this side. So hopefully those spot welds hold okay. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking of, like you know all the times when you're trying to lift an engine out of a car or lift a body off a car and you forget to undo like that one ground wire and you end up picking the whole chassis up on that one ground wire. Kind of, I'm kind of going for that strategy right now. <laughs> I think it'll be okay though. We'll pick it up, see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't swing this way into the forklift. Hopefully it goes up level and it doesn't go like that or like that or I don't know. All we can do is try it and see. All right, on this episode of Bad Ideas Poorly Executed, See what happens. Holy crap, I think it's going to work. Ah! Hey, that should be. I think that should be high enough to roll the chassis underneath. And it's level. Beautiful. You know what's amazing about this car is like all the hokey stuff that was done to it. The underside of the floor is in really nice shape. Like it's got like nice black paint on it. The inside had nice black paint and then I sanded it and got it all covered in body dust. But yeah, it looks really nice under here. Very nice. All right, let's get this chassis under here before this thing falls.
Doesn't it look so good? Oh, this is such a good looking car. Remember what it looked like a year ago when we took it apart? What a difference, what a difference. So huge thanks to John Ason, who just happened to pull around the corner as I was getting ready to put the body on, and of course Shannon and Lux for their help. So we're not quite there. It's on, but it's not sitting where it needs to be. And I'll show you why. If we look inside here, through this little access panel, I don't know if that's a factory thing or if somebody cut that out, but we're hitting the shocks. And I went underneath and looked on that side and we're hitting the shocks on that side too. So the body is still sitting up a little bit. It's not all the way down in place, which is weird because I swear we mocked this thing all up with the shocks on it, but maybe we didn't. Kind of looks like we didn't. Maybe I thought we did, but we didn't. Not a huge deal. We just gotta, you know, just cut the floor, I guess. That's probably the easier thing rather than trying to re-engineer the shocks because that's all welded up and painted and done. So we'll just, I mean, we already got a hole on one side there anyways. That little weird access panel, we'll just notch that a little bit. And then on the other side, we'll just have to cut a little access hole in there. We can make little covers so that, you know, fresh air doesn't come in there. You don't want to get a draft. And then it should sit down in place. Okay, we're underneath the car right now. Man, it's so close, so close. Uh, let's take our drill with a really long drill bit. And I think we'll just drill a hole kind of like there. And that'll give us like a little bit of a reference spot. Actually, maybe we'll go there because we need to cut enough room or cut a hole big enough in there that we can still get a socket in here to take these shocks out and change them in the future without taking the back seat out. All right, that looks like a good start. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. I think our fuel line's gonna be in the way. It's gonna get pinched in there, right in between there. Shannon and I just propped the body up high enough that I could get this out and I turned and clocked it. Before we set it back down, I have undone my fuel hose from the fuel line and I'm, I've just left it hanging out over here. I've also put a long hose on that I have labeled vent, meaning that it goes to the vent on here and the last thing I did was hooked up just a long piece of wire onto the sending unit here because I'm afraid that when we set this back down I won't be able to access any of that so this way it's already hooked up on that end and then I can just you know figure the rest out from here lift up on this do you want to pull these three blocks out Okay, same thing on 
this side, it might go that way. Oh yeah, there's enough room, barely. I think we're sitting in, sitting on it though. Cool. Oh yeah, there's no way I'd ever be able to get to that. What a dumb design. With our fuel line out of the way and our shock area trimmed, we can bolt the body down now. So these uh, little holes where the frame webbing is, it's a bit weird to get the bolts through. I've tried a couple different strategies, including like this is a 3 8 hole punch and I heated this up nice and warm with a torch to try to melt it through and it wasn't working. So the thing that's working the best for me is to just take this really long bar and just kind of ramrod your way through there. Then I take the, the bolt. I don't know what size 32 Ford bolts are supposed to be. This car had 7 16 bolts in it when I took it apart and I mean the body didn't fall off so they'll probably be fine. So we'll put those back on and then just kind of run them through. Except for this one. I did two with the camera off and it worked great. Turn the camera on. It's going to be weird. Okay, I think, I think that's a little better. There we go. These are two inch long, which is enough to get a fat washer on the top and a washer and a lock washer on the bottom almost almost on the bottom there we go so I've got three in so far I think there's eight in total one two three four five six maybe I don't know I'm just gonna go through them all until they're all in there. Body's all bolted down, except for the very back two bolts, because I need help with those. I need someone to go underneath and hold the nut while I thread it in from the top, and I'm by myself today, so that will have to wait for another day. But in the meantime, the rest of the bolts are all bolted down. It's tightened up, and check this out. Look at those gaps. They're not gaps so much, but body lines. The doors have never ever fit on this car. The day I bought it, they were saggy. And now they line up. They close really nice. I'm stoked about that. I didn't shim anything, I didn't change anything on the body. All we did was bolt the body down to a nice straight frame. And it just worked out. So that's good. Happy about that. Ah. Oh. I think we're going to call this video here. This is a good stopping point. I don't know what my next step's going to be. I got to sit here and think about that for maybe we'll build some floors. Uh, I got to put the steering column back in. The dash is still, it's just all sandblasted, bare metal. So we got to look into that a little bit. Um, I got some headers for this thing. We can put those on. I don't know, we can just start putting stuff together. Or maybe start fitting the rear fenders. I don't know. The world is our oyster. So make sure to subscribe and hit notification so when the next video on this comes up. And in the meantime, make sure to check out lgspeedcustom.com to get yourself some LG Speed and Custom merch. All right, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.